Hello, this is HD Wingnut, and today we're going to go over part two of Snap Raid. Uh, last video, we kind of went over how to uh, set up Snap Raid, kind of what Snap Raid is all about, set it up with Windows, and uh, basically to automate the process. Now we're going to go through several scenarios to kind of explain what you have to do in order to recover from corrupted files, a failed disk, or just a deleted file or folder. And even if you want to expand or replace a, a data disk or a parity disk, and pretty much all this is documented on the SnapRaid website. If you just go to snapraid.it under FAQ or manual. Um, but I'm going to kind of go through and kind of demonstrate what you should expect when it, this happens. Uh, but the first and foremost thing that you want to do is make sure if you ever notice an issue is do not sync your data. Okay, so that means don't go in and do a manual sync. And if you have any uh, sync tasks scheduled, go into your test scheduler and disable those just so that way uh, you don't accidentally commit a change to your parity or to your uh, array that you don't want to commit to, right? So let's say you deleted a file, you notice that that file shouldn't have been deleted, and you want to restore from your SnapRaid um, array, you can do that. But if once you commit the sync, it's going to commit that change. Uh, also, if you're running drive pool, you're going to want to stop that service, okay? And I think I went through that a few times, but I'll do it again anyways. You want to start a command prompt as an administrator and type net stop drive pool service. And then you should see drive pool trying to connect to the service because it's down. Then after you do all your procedures, go ahead and do a net start drive pool service. Okay, and then once that's up and running, this should come back up. It might take a few seconds. Sometimes it can take as much as a minute depending on what's going on. And there you go. So as we go, I'm going to mention, don't forget to uh, stop those services. And this is exactly what I mean. So the first scenario here is how are we going to recover from a deleted file or folder? So let's say that we have our setup here, right? We've got our data and our D drive, which consists of our JNK drive, which is protected by SnapRaid. And we have a file here called I can't draw dot bitmap. And we delete that file and we've emptied the recycle bin or we did it over network share so it's been deleted immediately and you think oh crap i need that file back and as long as you haven't synced your snap rate array yet you can go ahead and recover that file there's a couple ways to do this but it's pretty straightforward you want to go again go to your c colon backslash snap rate or whatever folder you have your snap rate executable in and with your snap rate dot config file then you're going to want to type in snap rate fix then dash F, and then the name of the file that you want to recover. Now I want to go ahead, before I do that, I'm going to do a snap rate diff, because that'll tell us, okay, it noticed that I deleted that I can't draw dot bitmap file, right? One removed, and that's what it removed. So, and that's what, when you go to do this command, it's going to restore that file. So we go snap raid diff, dash, you can specify the file, I can't draw that bitmap. If you only want to restore one of the files, Oops. Snap raid fix dash f I can't draw that bitmap. Sorry, I made a mistake there. But snap raid fix dash f I can't draw, and there it says it's been recovered. Re recovered I can't draw that bitmap. It says nine errors, nine recovered errors. Those are basically the blocks that are used for parity to um, calculate the actual file I can't draw that bitmap. Now when we go back here. We go ahead and refresh the screen, and there it's been restored. Another way that you can do this is, again, I will go and delete that same file. Right? And we do a snap raid diff. It says, oh, that file's been deleted. You can do a snap raid fix dash M. And M basically says, fix any missing files that it notices. And there it noticed that file, and it should have been restored again. Hit F5 to refresh, and there you go. You can also recover from the folder level. So let's say I've got this uh, test folder here called test, and under there I've got another folder called folder, a couple of files in it. Now whether you delete a file in here or just the folder itself, oops, delete this, it's just called folder, and we can again do a snap raid diff. We'll see that it remove both those files. Well, you can say, well, I just want to restore files that folder. So we can, you know, snap raid 
fix-f and then put the folder name. You can just put folder. You don't have to put the whole path unless you have multiple folders that were deleted uh, with subfolders called folder. But in this case, we'll do this and it will replace just that folder full of data. So we go back here, go to test, and there's the folder back with the data in it. So make sure you put the backslash there though when you go to do the uh, recovery of the folder and that indicates that it's actually a folder and not a file. And you could also do the same thing with using that dash M if you wanted to, only missing files from a folder. Let's say you deleted um, multiple files, but you only want to restore the files that are in that folder. You can just do dash M dash F and then folder backslash. Now this next scenario is what to do if you notice a corrupted file. Basically, if you go to scrub your data and it says that there's a corrupt file, or let's say you actually open a file and notice, hey, this doesn't look right. You can go into a snap raid scrub and then it should indicate, okay, this file has been corrupted. So first thing we're gonna do is I did basically go in and this file here, file, I just picked a random file in my array, file 000124, and I went in uh, using a hex editor and modified that file on the disk level so that the file system is not aware that this file has changed. So if we go to do a snap raid diff, it doesn't notice that anything's changed, right? So it's not going to notice it that way because the, the file's corrupt and it has not scrubbed the data yet. Now let's say we go to scrub our, our array. In this case, I'm going to have to do a snap raid scrub and I have to scrub everything so that way I make sure I touch everything for this example. But let's say um, in your case, you may check your uh, scrub uh, logs once a week or once a month or whatever and notice that there's a problem there. So I'm going to output this to dash L log dot txt. Okay, now the scrub is finished and it said here we've got one data error and here it actually tells you exactly what to do in order to fix it. But normally you may just be looking at the log file, right? So I'm going to go to my C snap raid folder and I save that to log.txt. There it is. And it will tell us error summary error data. Okay, one data error. Uh oh, um, and it tells us exactly what the file was. File zero 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 one two four dot text, and so in order to recover that file or to fix that file, you can follow the process here, which is snap raid status, snap raid dash e fix, and snap raid dash b bad scrub. So first is snap raid status, and it'll tell us there's our error. So this operation really isn't necessary, but I'm going through the process. So the next you're going to want to do is snap raid dash e fix. So you can just do a snap raid. Now they always they mix this up sometimes. They put fix first or fix last. I like to put fix first so I can kind of say snap raid. What am I going to do? Fix and then dash e, and then it should go ahead and fix that file. It says one error, one recovered errors, and there's the file that it recovered. And last thing it told us to do was snap raid dash p bad scrub that's just to verify that everything is good and it scrubbed it so basically it means it verified that the uh, updated file is correct and it's it should not be corrupt anymore so that's all there is to that okay now this scenario we're going to talk about what to do if you want to replace a data disk say a data disk actually dies on you or you just want to replace it with a newer one or a larger capacity one and again, um, if you or your disk dies, just do not sync. Make sure you disable all your processes related to scrubs and syncs. And uh, also, you're going to want to stop dry pool. Again, do the net stop uh, dry pool service and net start dry pool service just to make sure that you don't further corrupt your data or lose a chance at recovering data. So we're going to emulate this here. I'm going to go to disk management. And again, I've got drives J and K, which are part of my array that are protected by drive pool. Sorry, by snap raid. And let's say drive J disappears, right? It dies. I'm actually going to delete this volume. Poof. It's gone. And then you're going to notice if you're using drive pool, you're going to notice it says disk is missing. Okay, so I'm going to go include uh, drive pool in this process, but uh, you can skip that part if obviously you're not using drive pool. So when you're using drive pool, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove that disk from the array. Just click remove. Okay. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is 
deactivate the dry pool service. So we'll do the next step. And dry pool will be whiny over here saying it's connecting, but it can't. That's fine. That's what we want. And then obviously also go and stop any um, snap or scrub operations and also stop any processes that may be making changes to your uh, protected snap rate array. Okay, now that that disk is gone, I'm going to remove it, replace it with a new disk, okay? And in this case, let's say I replace it with uh, this disk zero here. And I'm going to reformat it. I'm going to call this the new J, okay, because I'm just swapping out the disk one for the other. So my old drive letter is gone, right, because the disk is gone. So I can use the same drive letter if I want to. And I'll call this, again, data one. Call it whatever you want. But for consistency's sake, I'll leave that. Okay, so now we've got our new disk installed. We have it formatted NTFS. And then if you're using drive pool, what you're going to want to do, and this is an important step here, is you're, you're going to want to start the drive pool service. Net start drive pool service. It'll bring this back online. Then you see your new J here. You're going to want to go ahead and add that to the array. Okay. And then we're going to want to stop the service again. I'll show you why in a second here. Okay, it stopped. So when we did that, if you go to drive J, now it's created this new pool part folder here for your drive pool. Okay, and that's why also why it's important to include the pool part folder level in your snapraid.config file instead of just the root file because recovering this makes it a lot easier this way. So you're going to want to go into this new pool part folder on the drive that you just created, the folder you just created in drive pool, right click on it, copy address. Now you're going to want to go back to your C snapraid folder and update the snapraid.config file. And you're going to want to go down to your data entry here. So this old J here, if we notice, we're going to do data, whoops, data D2, and then paste, because we copied that over there, right? You notice this pull part folder now is different. We'll delete the original entry. Whoops, we want to call this D1, because that's what we replaced. And now it should look to this folder to do the file syncing with your array. Okay, so go ahead and save that. And now we can go to the snap rate portion of this. So in order to recover uh, from snap raid, again, you're going to want to make sure that your config file has the proper data disk entry here. And then after you do that, you're going to want to go to fix that disk. So you're going to do the snap raid fix again. Okay, fix. And then you do a dash D and then the name. So from your snap config file, this friendly name is what they're looking for. So we call these D1. Okay, so we're going to put D1 space and then we're going to save it to a log file called fix.log. Sorry, I have to put dash L fix.log. So now what this is going to do, it's going to go snap rate fix and it's going to only address disk D1 then it's going to log it to the log file fix.log and the folder C colon backslash snap raid because we did not assign a path to this. Okay, now when you do this because it's a full disk, right? Normally if you have terabytes of data, this is going to take a long time because it has to read the data from all the other disks from the parity disk and reconstruct the data back onto the, the new disk. Because I just have a small amount of data and I'm using SSDs, this should go pretty quick just for demonstration purposes. So I hit enter and there it goes. It's recovering the data. So there you go. It uh, has restored all the data back onto the J disk. And there you go. Now, because we put the uh, snap raid. Uh, content file on there. You can either copy that over from another disk or you can just have it generate the new uh, content file, which you're going to do here. Now, this next option is uh, this next this next procedure is optional if you just want to verify that everything copied over properly. 
basically does a validation of everything again snap raid um, check dash d and then the name of the drive again d1 right and then we want to do a dash a flag and this will basically just check that the data on d1 is is basically like an audit right it's going to make sure that all the data matches all the uh, proper checksums and parity so this again could take a while if you have a lot of data and slow disks okay everything okay then lastly you're going to want to do a snap raid sync and now it should have when you did that snap raid sync on the j drive it should have created the new snap raid content file as it did right there now let's say during the uh, recovery process you get some files or, or chunks of data that says unrecoverable um, I can show you that a little bit later and how you can actually identify what files you are unrecoverable so that way you can reach back in your backups and just restore those files one last thing that I wanted to mention is after you've uh, recovered your data and synced your data and everything is good with uh, snap raid you're going to want to restart your drive pool service if you're using drive pool so go back to your administrator command prompt net start drive pool service Okay, and then you should see it pop up here. And then you're going to see this gray area here. And that basically says it's other or outside of the array. Now, if you go ahead and go to manage pool and remeasure, it should show everything back into the array. Now, let's say you actually go and uh, rebalance this data after you've done a uh, recovery of that disk, which you can or can do, you don't have to do. Also, don't forget to start up any uh, scheduled sync or scrub operations that you have disabled as well. Once that's complete, you can go back and do a snap raid sync because it may have moved some files around when it did that balance. And now you should be good to go. Everything should be back to normal. This next scenario is what you do if you want to replace your parity disk. So whether that's replacing it because your parity drive died or whether you want to upgrade it to a larger capacity or a faster drive, whatever, doesn't matter. This is the process you're going to go to, through. Now, obviously, if it'll be a little different if uh, the data disk died because you don't have the parity data available to you. But if you do have the data available to you, you can just copy and paste the files from one disk to the other. So in this case, the parity drive typically only has the snaprate.parity and also the snaprate.content file on it. So you can just click and drag it to the new file drive I'm sorry so in this case let's say I want to add a new parity drive so our current parity drive is P we install a new parity disk and create a new simple volume here and we're going to call it Q because we want it to exist with our current parity drive we'll call this one parity new so we know it's a new parity disk okay so now parity new exists here you could technically just do this and drag and drop if you wanted to and obviously with just 23 gigs of data that really wouldn't take too long it would be a horrible idea but if you're going to end up with terabytes of data it's going to be a large file and uh, that may not be the most consistent way uh, or mo most reliable way to transfer your data from one disk to another so what i like to do is i like to use a, a built-in uh, command line program in windows called robocopy so in order to do that though we're going to have to go to um, a administrator command prompt kind of the same way we did with the net start drive pool service and net stop drive pool service right and in this case we don't have to worry about drive pool because the parity drive doesn't have anything to do with drive pool okay it's not protected by drive pool maybe it is but that gets more complicated um, but the, typically it's not going to be but again you still may want to um, disable any sync or scrub operation so that way it doesn't interfere with the process of copying that large file over. So what you're going to want to do is uh, run an administrator command prompt and the command is to copy the files, robocopy, and then you want to go from existing drive, P, to the new drive, Q, and then you're going to want to go a flag, this is called ZV, Okay, that slash ZB basically means restartable mode. So basically this large file, if it gets interrupted during the transfer process, go back and rerun this command again, and it will pick up where it left off. Uh, the only difference is that the transfer process may be a little bit slower than normal, but that's only because it has to create checkpoints as it goes along the way so it knows where to start over from. 
and then we want to add the dash L command. Now the dash L, you only want to run this the first time. Basically, it's just a try run, basically a list. It's going to say, okay, here's what we're going to do. This is a quick way to double check to make sure that you didn't mistype something or it's changing, transferring things to the wrong location, whatever. So obviously, so we want from P to drive Q, whoops, wires, from P to Q, and then we're going to do slash ZB for recovery mode and then slash L and then we want to put a star here to say okay we want to transfer everything in that folder and the slash L will run this and it says okay we're going to transfer these two files one directory two files the directory is basically just the Q drive okay and now if you happen to get an error here like it says something about uh, backup mode or error 3 I did run into that before, and the way you can fix that is chances are the disk has been, uh, ownership has been changed or created under a different owner than system. So like if you go to format the disk, sometimes it'll put it under your username for whatever reason, uh, but it should be under system. So to fix that on your destination drive, in this case Q, you're going to want to right click the drive letter, go to properties, go to security, go down to advanced, and then here it should say owner system. Now, if it doesn't say owner system, it says owner, and then your name, like HD Wingnut, Mark, whatever, go to change. And then you're going to want to type in system here, and then click OK, and then click OK again. I'm not doing that now, uh, but then that's how we change it. And then it should get rid of that error, and everything should work just fine. So now that we see that this dash L tells us everything's going to transfer properly, we're actually going to execute this command. So I'm going to go ahead and push the up arrow to bring up that command again and delete the dash L and then go ahead and hit enter and it's going to commit the change. So now you can see it's capping from P to Q and if we double check it in File Explorer see here it's adding it. Now it's already blocked off the file sizes that it needs. It doesn't mean that it's actually been transferred yet. You can see the pro progress going on down here. Okay, now it's been completed. So now if you want to keep the same drive letter, you're going to have to remove or rename that old parity drive to something else or just remove it, shut down, remove it from your system, reboot, then change that uh, uh, parity drive now back to the parity drive letter that you want it to be. Or you can go into your config file. If you want it to just be the new drive, you can just do parity q, snap rate dot parity, and it would work too. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the original parity drive p delete volume let's say it's emulates shutting down removing disk from the system let me go back here and change drive letters and paths on the new parity drive we'll change it back to p and now we go back to our snap raid folder and we do a snap raid if see if anything's changed snap raid sync and nothing to do everything should be good and if you really wanted to you could go through and do a uh, snap raid scrub and scrub everything but uh, i don't think that's really necessary okay so let's say your parity disk actually dies you don't have access you do not have access to your parity uh, file you can just uh, there's a couple ways to do this is you can either just go in and especially if you have single parity this is probably the best way. So let's say on drive P, these files are gone. Yes, I'm deleting them. Then the best thing to do is just go back into your other drives, delete the snapraid.content files. And if you replace your parity drive with the same drive letter, again, you do not have to touch the config file on snapraid.config. But if you use a different uh, drive letter, you can go ahead and go to your snapraid.config file and update your parity uh, drive letter there. Then all you have to do is go back to your snap raid folder and just do a snap raid sync. And it's going to see it as like a brand new array and just go through the process of generating all new parity and the snap raid.content files. Conversely, uh, you can actually just use the fix command to restore that parity drive in the same way you did with the data disk. Now, this is probably more advantageous if you have multiple parity drives because. This way you're not generating new parity for the other drives that are perfectly fine. So this way your array is still protected. So in order to do this, 
Now let's say again, I'm going to go here to my parity drive and I'm going to delete these files to emulate. Okay, the disk is dead. I inserted a new, new disk. I renamed it to P again. So I don't have to adjust my config file. And then I want to update the uh, snapraid.content. So all you have to do is go back to your C colon backslash snapraid folder and snapraid fix and then dash D and then you want the name of the parity drive and obviously wait, I have to open uh, your parity drive in this case is just called parity so this is the friendly name called parity and so that's going to go through and regenerate the parity files for this okay there you go and that process is complete um, but once this is complete you're going to want to sync anyways just to make sure everything is up to date and it will also generate the content file back on the parity drive as well. So now we should be back up and working just fine. Now this next scenario is what to do if you want to add an additional data disk to your array. And if you're using drive pool, you're going to want to add the drive to your drive pool array first so it generates that pool part folder before adding it to the config file. So in this case, I'm going to go into my disk management Let's say I installed a new hard drive, SSD, whatever. Oops. And here's my new drive. I'm going to add it. And we're going to call it drive loader L because my other data drives are J and K, which is going in sequence L. And then we're going to call it data 3 because the other ones are called data 1 and 2. Doesn't matter what you call it just for convention's sake, and finish. Now you can think of this one of two ways. In drive pool, um, you see it pop up here. You can go ahead and add that to the array. All right, now it should not add anything to this drive yet except for the pool part folder. You look at drive L, there's a pool part folder, you're good to go. Now you're gonna want to add this uh, pool part, or sorry, this, yes, this pool part folder to the to the configuration file. So go back to your C colon backslash snap raid folder with snap raid config file, which is here. And then you're going to want to add the additional data disk. So in this case, we're going to go down to the data section, go add data D3. And then you want to go to the pool part folder of your new disk. Again, a, a drive pool, you have to work on the individual drives, not the, uh, the actual drive letter for the pool. So in this case, it's drive L, or you can go to your mount point if you have a mount point for it, right? In this case, C mount, whatever. And go into that pool part folder, regardless whether it's a mount point or drive, right click on that, copy address, then go back to your config file and just paste it there. And now that pool part will now be protected. And then once you do this, save the config file, go back to your C colon backslash snap raid and do a snap raid sync. Uh, also, you may want to add the content file to that new drive as well if you want to. So you can add that in here. Content L colon backslash snap raid dot content. Save it. And then you can run the snap raid sync command. If we go look over here at the L drive, you should see the snap rate at content file pop up here when we do the sync. And since the drive is empty right now, the sync should be almost in instantaneous. And there you go. Go back to the L drive and there's a snap rate at content file. Now with drive pool, uh, because you have this third disk, you may want to distribute that data across there. So you can go here and one, first of all, make sure you remeasure the pool. Okay, and then go down here and click that little up arrow and go rebalance. So now it's going to copy, balance all the data evenly across each of the three disks. Okay, so anytime you rebalance your dry pool, you need to do a snap raid sync right away. Okay, now let's say we actually want to add a second parity drive now. Instead of just a data disk, we want to add dual parity to this array because it's getting bigger. And you want to make sure you're well protected. Well, it's uh, basically the same as adding a... a a new parity, but we'll go ahead and go through the process. So let's say we go in, we add a new disk to our system. We've got this drive here. We're going to add it as a new simple volume. We're going to call it drive letter Q this time. It's going to be our second parity. 
Now we just go parity two and finish. And now we've got this blank disk here to add as a parity drive. So in order to add your second parity, you just need to go into your config file and then go up to the parity section. Now the first parity is under its own section here. It doesn't need to be, but down here you're going to want to go to the um, two dash parity. So two dash parity. And then in this case, we're going to name it Q. And then colon backslash snap raid dot two dash parity. So stick with that convention and you should be fine. So that friendly name of your second parity drive is going to be two dash parity. And then it's going to be the Q drive and then the snap raid two dot dot two dash parity is going to be the file that it's going to save the parity data to. Go ahead and save that. And then all you have to do is go ahead and run a snap raid sync, but you have to use the dash capital F or dash dash forceful option. So it makes sure it calculates new parity for that new drive. So just snap raid sync dash dash force dash full. This next scenario, say you actually want to remove a parity drive for whatever reason, right? You decide you don't need two or three parity disks, you just want one, or say one of your data disks dies and you don't have a spare data disk to get your data back that you need to access, we can actually take that parity drive and just use that as your data disk for an example. So it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do in this case, right, our second parity drive is drive Q. You can just go to that disk and uh, delete the content or reformat the drive, whatever you want to do. I'll just go here and delete these files. Click yes. And then you want to go into your config file and remove it from the content file if it's there. And then go up to your parity location here and just comment that out if you want to. Okay. And then go ahead and file, save. And then you just have to go through and do a snap raid sync again. And that's all there is to it. Now this scenario is, say you want to remove a data disk for whatever reason. And this takes a little bit, a little bit of finagling, but it's not too bad. Basically what you want to do is go to your config file. And then for the disk that you want to remove, one, you want to make sure you remove the content um, file that if it exists for that disk. In this case, I'm going to remove drive L from my array. So I'm going to delete that content L there. Then I'm going to go down to the data location and I'm going to reassign this L drive to a empty folder. Okay. And you can do this temporarily. You can just assign it to your, say your C drive and just create a new folder called empty, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter as long as it's empty. And so you just go here and you assign this to C slash empty. Go ahead and save. And then what you need to do then is go back to your snap raid command line prompt and type snap raid sync and then dash dash force empty. And then what it will do, it should basically remove that uh, data that's on that disk from being protected. Now, if you happen to be using drive pool and you want to get rid of a disk, you're going to go to here and click remove and it'll transfer the data off of these disks to other disks in the pool. And so you're going to want to do that first before you do any configuration changes to snap raid. Then you're going to want to do a snap raid sync after all the data has been moved off that disk. And then you're going to want to update the configuration changes I already discussed. Go here and uh, create the empty folder and delete the any indication to the um, that drive that you're removing. And then you can go back to snap raid sync and do a force full. Sorry, force empty. My bad. Okay, now that it's synced, you can go back to your config file and then delete that empty folder reference there because D3 no longer exists to snap raid. Go ahead and file and save that. And then you go to do another sync. 
everything should be back to normal. So now it's only protecting the disk one and two. And so that wraps it up for the second part of the snap raid. And I hope you found it useful and helpful. And I do plan on having a, probably one more uh, part to this, basically kind of explaining things uh, about the parity hole and kind of why it's important to have dual parity or why it's important to manage deleted files differently than you normally would. So hopefully I'll have that one posted here shortly. Thanks again for stopping by.